You know what's so funny? I actually just yelled at a guy outside because he was like, you're Krayshawn. I'm like, nah. He's like, you be nasty. I'm like, no. He's like, no, you Krayshawn. Like, you're dead ass Krayshawn. I turned around. I was like, stop fucking talking to me right now. Right now. I would definitely say the white girl mob was, we were pioneers. Like, and I, I think it's sad today to where we have all ended up with each other. But um, I, I would definitely say Krayshawn changed the game. And I mean, I heard Gucci Gucci before she put it out. And I looked at her and I was like, bitch, what the fuck? You are about to change a fucking game. Because not only are you about to fucking sign a deal, which was like, ooh, for us, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, deal, ah, sticky situation, that's a lot of money, I don't know if I want to pay you back, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, um, it, I was excited for her. Did I know like everything else was going to happen afterwards? No, of course not. But yeah, I, she, I, I would like to think that me and Vinasi had a, a part to do with like being pioneers and and changing, I mean, I, to a certain extent, I did with style, and then I feel like later on, me rapping with Riff Raff opened up a new book, um, but Krayshawn definitely kind of opened up people's minds to maybe letting more white females into the industry. We're all so different and fucking outlandish and crazy that like people just fall out things happen people grow up I mean she entered the industry at 21 I mean from 21 to 25 you're still figuring out like who you are like as a person from like 17 to 25 you're like really becoming you're finding your identity like that's what I believe I mean I'm changing it up every second you know what I'm saying so it's like I still can't even tell you like this is who I am you know what I'm saying and this is my lane because I'm not sure of that I mean a year ago I was like nope I'm not gonna be a fucking rapper you know what I'm saying I was like there's interviews where I'm like totally against it and then of course Riff Raff calls me up and I'm so down that I was like yeah I'll come do a verse like it'll it's whatever fine you know but um no, there, I don't think there was anything that they could have done. Because once she got signed, they were so focused on just Krayshawn that we, me and V Nasty either had to go and do our own thing completely or we had to like do what they wanted us to do. And that was the big issue is that I didn't want to be a DJ. I took classes, I did, did things here and there, and I just realized like I don't want to be a DJ and I don't want to be your DJ and it was the issue and I ha kind of just had to leave and go do my own thing and figure out what it is I wanted to do you know spending 20 being 21 and like dedicating your life to be under somebody else or behind someone else and not following what you want to do could like really be bad for you at the end. You know what I'm saying? Three or four years pass and then you're behind someone else and you're like, well, wait, like I, I need to focus on me. And it's not like they were fucking paying me to keep it real. Like the label wasn't paying me. I wasn't getting paid. Like I got to travel for free, but traveling for free doesn't pay for shit. It doesn't, you know what I'm saying? You can't pay rent and you can't eat and you can't do things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, was I treated well? Of course, like it wasn't like I wasn't treated good, but it was just like the focus was on Krayshawn, like period, you know what I'm saying? And like, it came to a point where like, we couldn't even talk to Krayshawn without her manager being around. And as your friend, like, I don't feel that. I don't feel it. You know, why is he here all the time? Even when we're just kicking it one-on-one. -on -one? I didn't feel it. I was just so amazed with how people were picking up what we were doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and loving it and hating it. And I was like focused on, I wanted to go to parties. I wanted to run the streets. I wanted to experience everything I could experience. So the money didn't really click in until my mother who was, well, this is what happened really. We got Lil Debbie. I got Lil Debbie name originated from Krayshawn and her manager. And they were like, you need a DJ name. So I was DJ Lil Debbie. And 
short after that, like it just picked up. I went through so many names. Nobody knew, nothing really stuck, but DJ Lil Debbie. Then I went and I bought DJ Lil Debbie. I branded myself and I said, you know what? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do my thing with this on the side. Krayshawn and her manager didn't feel that. Like they did not feel that at all. They didn't like it. So that's when things really started to get weird. And my mom was like, who still handles my business account today, like all the shit. She was like, you know, you're gonna have to start making some money because you're not working a nine to five and you're just traveling. Nobody has time to support you. My mom's not a fucking million, like it's, I'm not a LA daddy's girl. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom works a nine to five up in the Bay. She's like, look, there's no money for you. So you gotta figure it out. And that's when things kind of got weird. Did I ever ask Krayshawn for money? No. I mean, I knew that that money that was given to her is label money. It's not like you got a million dollars in the bank and you're like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? That goes to recording, that goes to the writers, that goes to music videos, that goes to traveling, that goes to, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It goes to so many different things. Like, who knows how much she even made afterwards? And I don't know if she even made anything, which is sad to me. Me and Krayshawn fell out before me and V Nasty fell out and V Nasty was still cool with Krayshawn. It all, it all came down to who owes who. You owe me, you owe me, you owe me. Not money wise, favor wise between the three of us. It, you owe me this and you owe me that. And remember when I did this, you remember did that. It didn't even have to do with money. It literally have to, had to do with you owe me. And I, and on top of that, I just had a huge issue. Like, like I told you to this day, like this guy outside was like, no, you cray Sean. And I had to yell at him. And it, it, it was, it's just, it ha it's like, I don't know if we'll ever get past it because of what I personally went through after I was kicked out of white girl mob. I mean, her fans harassing me. I still get her fans harassing me. Other female artists that she's worked with that to this day harass me. Like, people dissing me like, oh, you want to be Krayshawn. You're a want to be Krayshawn. Like, bro, did you not see me right next to her? Like, growing up with her, like, shaping, like, white female music and in rap music industry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are, people are mean. Really mean. You know what I'm saying? The internet's a weird world. Bullies.